in the last few weeks I watched quite a number of videos about speed matching locomotives and noticed that in most cases the presented solutions failed to meet my requirements and expectations for that topic. So I thought it is time for a closer look at the topic and possibly rethink the way how speed matching is achieved. Welcome to the IOTT channel, I am Hans Tanner. Most of the speed matching videos I have seen and I list some of those in the description below fall in one of these three categories. First, videos that explain how to use software like Decoder Pro to program some configuration variables like minimum, medium and maximum speed or an entire speed table. These videos are certainly helpful to get started with computer assisted CV programming but do not really provide a lot of information about speed matching. Second, videos that explain how to use the decoder configuration variables to adjust the speed settings of two locomotives in a way that their speed curves match each other so that it is easier to use them in a consist. This is what I would call the technical form of speed matching and it is really what most speed matching videos are dealing with. And third, videos that aim at setting the configuration variables in a way that the resulting speed of a particular throttle position corresponds to a predictable scale speed. Something like set your throttle to 50% and you know your locomotive is going with a scale speed of about 40 miles per hour. That is what I like to call speed matching with operations in mind. And it is obvious that if you do that successfully for all locomotives on your roster, you automatically solve any technical consisting issues as well. So speed matching has a technical and an operational aspect. And this brought up two questions I wanted to have answers for. First, how relevant is technical speed matching for a reliable multi-unit operation? And second, what is the most efficient way to calibrate a locomotive to a predictable scale speed? Here is what I found. To answer the first question, I did a quite extensive series of tests measuring pulling forces and speeds on the various load conditions and track configurations. I really hoped that would make for an interesting video, but while working on it, I realized that it would be pretty boring to watch. So I jumped straight to the conclusions, which are pretty much in line with what you find in many other videos that deal with technical aspects of speed matching. First, configuring locomotives that operate in a consist to a similar no load speed is generally a good idea. Second, thanks to the load adapting characteristics of the DC motors usually used in model locomotives, the tolerance window is rather large. If two locomotives are running at approximately the same speed, it is good enough. And third, special attention should be given to locomotives with load adjusted motor output, for example back EMF. If more than one decoder tries to adjust the speed of the train by varying the motor output, there will be conflict. Some decoders have algorithms to limit the effect, but to be on the safe side, you should disable the feature in all but one locomotive of the consist. Now for the operational aspect, which I think is much more interesting. The goal is to calibrate the speed curve of a locomotive in a way that it runs at the predictable scale speed for every selected throttle position. This goal can be achieved in three steps. In step one, we need to decide what throttle position should correspond to what scale speed. A Digitrack throttle, for example, displays the speed level as percentage of full speed from 0 to 99. One possibility therefore is to interpret the display directly as miles per hour which gives a speed range from 0 to 99 and makes it very easy for an operator to observe speed limits. 
Of course, you can use different conversion formulas depending on the top speed of your locomotive and the display provided on your throttle. And of course, it is also a possibility to have several active speed profiles, for example, one for freight trains, another one for passenger trains and so on. Step two then is to measure the physical speed of the locomotive for each speed step and determine what scale speed it corresponds to. This can be done the traditional way using a tape measure and a stopwatch or you can use a speed measuring device such as this speed tunnel that directly display the scale speed. And if you now think that is way too complicated and too much work you are not alone. But hold on, I will show you a simpler way of doing it in just a minute. Once the speed step to scale ratio is known, it is relatively simple to program the decoder speed table in step 3. All we have to do is setting the motor output of each speed step so that the locomotive moves with the desired target scale speed. So, Essentially, it is merging the throttle profile from step 1 with the technical speed characteristics from step 2 and then program the target values into the decoder. If you have watched video number 88, you probably remember that I mentioned a new feature I am working on for the purple head sensor, which is called Speed Magic. Essentially, it is the implementation of the above workflow and here I give you a quick preview and demonstration of the part that is already working. In the first section of the Speedmagic page, you can import the current decoder information and CV settings from your JMRI Decoder Pro locomotive roster. And you can also store it back to the roster after altering the speed table. If you are not using JMRI rosters, never mind, this step is optional. The second part lets you define a throttle profile, so step 1 in the workflow I just explained. You can define the maximum scale speed and the number of speed steps your throttle provides and then use the mouse to define a throttle speed curve, defining what scale speed you want to have for each throttle setting. You also can save the settings to a file and reload it so that you can have several predefined throttle profiles. The third section can do the technical speed analysis of the locomotive. And this part is already working, so let me show you. First, you place the locomotive you want to calibrate together with the purple head measuring core on the track. Ideally, you choose a flat, straight section so that the measured speed is not influenced by grades and curves. Other than that, you can choose any track. There are no requirements for sensors or the like, as all the measurement and control functions are done by the purple head sensor. Make sure the locomotive is set to the direction the speed test is about to start. The orientation of the purple head car, on the other hand, does not matter. Click Assign DCC address and turn the throttle knob to tell the sensor what address you want to calibrate. Then enter the length of the track section the sensor is allowed to use for speed testing. The longer it is, the fewer runs the locomotive will have to make until all speed steps are measured. On N scale, as demonstrated here, meaningful lengths start at about 1 meter, which is 40 inches. For this demonstration, I select 1.5 meters or 150 centimeters. In the next field, you enter the maximum scale speed the locomotive is allowed to go. Most model locomotives can go faster than the corresponding prototype scale speed. But if you want to limit the speed to prototype scale speed, then there is no need to test all 128 decoder steps, but Purple Hat can stop testing when 110% of the indicated maximum speed is detected. On the other hand, if you want to make sure that Purple Hat measures the scale speed of all 128 speed steps, simply enter an unreasonably high maximum value and Purple Hat will go to the limits of the decoder. 
When done, click Start Test and watch Purple Hat doing its thing. First, there is not much going on as it starts with measuring the speed for the lowest speed steps. Many locomotives have no movement at all. The sensor is programmed to calculate the speed based on travel distance and time, either after 8 seconds or 5 turns of the axle, whatever comes first. With hardly any movement, of course, it is the timeout that defines the test time for each step. At higher speeds, it will be the number of turns, therefore, the time for each speed step will be shorter. On the throttle, you always see the current speed step updated and you also will hear a short beep from the throttle every time a new speed is set. Once the end of the assigned track section is reached, the locomotive will stop automatically, change direction and then start the test for the other direction, so progress is slow again. Purple Hat does a full speed measurement for forward and backward and provides two speed curves at the end of the test. It therefore should be possible to automatically calculate forward and backward trim values so that any differences in forward and backward speed can be compensated. But that is a feature I am still working on. Once the locomotive is back at the starting position, it reverses again and continues with the next unmeasured step, in forward direction, and so on. It keeps repeating going back and forth with increasingly higher speeds until it reaches speed step 128 or the indicated maximum speed plus 10% in both directions. Once this is the case, the locomotive travels back to the starting position and the test is complete. The two speed curves are then communicated to the web browser and displayed as technical speed profile. As it is normal with measurement data, there is some value fluctuation, but there is a clear trend line and with just some filtering of the data, a nice speed function can be extracted from that data. The curves for this locomotive also show that the forward speed of the locomotive for a particular speed step 
is considerably faster than when it is going backwards at the same speed step. But the shape of the curves is comparable, so it should be possible to compensate the difference with a trim setting. Also interesting to note that a scale speed of about 80 km per hour or 50 miles per hour is already achieved at a throttle setting of about 25%. I did some measurements with higher settings and the curve is flattening to some degree, but these models can go way too fast. Scale speeds of more than 100 miles per hour are common, so it is a good thing to calibrate them and make sure the maximum scale speed is limited to a prototype-like value. Based on the data we just measured, Section 4 of the web page then calculates the decoder setting for every speed step in the speed table, as well as the trim values. You can use the mouse to make any changes and when you are happy, click the program button to write the new values to the decoder. Or place the locomotive on a programming track and program it there if your decoder does not support OPS mode programming. And that's it! Your locomotive is now calibrated to define scale speeds. Just repeat that simple process for the other locomotives on your roster and you can do operating sessions with calibrated scale speed. As you can see, there is still some work to do to finalize the functionality of the purple head sensor, but the most complex part, the automated analysis of the technical speed of a locomotive, works quite nicely. More to come and if you don't want to miss it, subscribe to the IOTT channel and click the bell icon. And that's it for today's video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you and you have a better idea now how the purple head sensor can simplify the speed calibration of your locomotive fleet. I am pretty sure once it is available, it will be a valuable tool for that process. Please let me know in the comments section of this video what you think about this approach and if you want to help to promote the idea and the IOTT channel in general, please click the like button below to tell YouTube to recommend this video to other model railrollers. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.